Hey guys, it's Phil coming back at you with another video. I hope everyone is doing well and they're taking care of themselves and exercising self-care during this wild time. And since the last time that I uploaded and shared the names, 22 people have passed their exams and they are as follows. Asia W, Candy C, Ernie M, Kimberly P, Jeannie L, Angelica S, Nene W, Addison Q, Sharon C, Caitlin W, Stephen H, Michelle P, Lily S, Regina R, Julie N, Jean B, Candace S, Hika W, Lakeisha P, Kimberly D, Natasha W, and Jackie R. Ah! I'm so excited to hear those people pass because they walked inside of the exam, they believed in themselves, even when they had self-doubt and they were challenging, they walked in had confidence in their self and their abilities, took care of themselves during their preps, and kicked the exam right in the chest and got what they wanted to get. And I'm excited because it's amazing even during this challenging time where there is adversity, people are walking into the exams, they're getting what they want to get, and they're believing and achieving themselves and getting lessons along the way. I'm amazed by that, man. And the amount of support that you guys have been showing me lately is mind-blowing. I've had the biggest study groups that I've ever had. And the, the show out, even in the free study group that I did this week, was amazing as well. I just, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys, whether you're just watching the videos, whether you're in the tutoring, whether you're in my paid study groups, whether you're in the free study groups. It just is amazing to me the amount of support that you guys show me. And it's awesome to me, man, to be able to say that this many people are rocking in the community and everyone is building each other up and they're getting the job done. And if you want to be directly part of the community, you can join the Sunday study groups and the next ones are as follows. 531, practice questions, 67, research, program development and program evaluation, 614, acronym and practice questions, 621, human developmental theories, and 628, community interventions. And if you want any information about those, send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com. And if you're like, I want more individualized focus, I do offer individual tutoring as well. Send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com. Information for those will also be in the description of this video. And for those that don't know what the video description is, it is the information under the video, the timeline, if you will. And yeah, my email again is berda24 at gmail.com. And if you want to support me as well as help with Audible that has agreed to sponsor my videos and my podcast episodes, go to my Audible affiliate link at audibletrial.com slash fill in the gaps. Sign up for the 30-day free trial and you get a free book as well. And for those that have signed up for that trial, it blows my mind and I'm amazed at how many of you have done it. And if you haven't done it already, it's the easiest way to support me and it costs you absolutely nothing. And books that I suggest, because if you're like, yo, I want to help out, but I don't know what books to get, there are three that I would suggest that you sign up for with your free book or if you continue with Audible later on and you're like, I want to get another book, they are as follows. The Alchemist, The Power of a Positive No, and Shoe Dog. And The Alchemist and Shoe Dog are more about stories and lessons. Shoe Dog is about how Nike was formed. I was really, really intrigued by that. I was like, wow, I did not know Phil Knight had to go through all of these things. And The Alchemist is a lot of life lessons that I am applying to my life currently. And The Power of a Positive No is for those that are not getting what they want right now, but they can utilize not getting where they want to go to actually achieve where they want to go and maintain that. And I'm a huge proponent of personal growth and finding ways to improve yourself, even with the limited amount of time, because Audible is recordings, so you can have it in your ear as you're multitasking. So if you're busy, like myself, you're able to do that. And again, if you want to help me out as well as help out my sponsor, which is Audible, it's audibletrial.com slash fill in the gaps. Sign up for the 30-day free trial get that free audiobook and start advancing and helping yourself now. And something that I've been hearing a lot about that I want to address and give further insight. So for those that were in the free study group, you kind of heard this information already, but not everyone was able to get into that. But a huge theme that I kept hearing was Phil, this other person that I was, I went to school with or my coworkers, they're passing, they're doing everything that I wanted to do, or I didn't prioritize myself. And now I feel behind. Do not compare yourself to other people. 
It's easier said than done, but when you compare yourself to another person, you are then giving them the power to tell you what you should be doing in your situation, which is not a good thing. Because if I have different skills and gifts and opportunities than somebody else does, but they're looking at me and saying, man, I really wish I could be doing that. Or I'm looking at other people that have different skills, abilities, and they have their unique superpowers. And I'm like, yo, I wish I could really be them, but I'm taken away from myself because I have unique powers and gifts and abilities to be able to walk in and do whatever the heck I want to do because I've been wired to do so. So I cannot compare myself to where someone else is at. And even if I want to get to where they're at, my path may be different than theirs. So you have to look at your situation and say, what am I good at? What am I not good at? What are ways that I can improve the areas that I'm not good at to get to where I want to go? In the context of taking this exam, you're going to get people that hand you materials all of the time. Not every piece of material is a good material for you. Not that it's not good material in general, but it's not built for you. So a lot of times people are like, well, this program was successful or this other book over here, this audio thing or this Phil guy, he makes videos. They're really good. And I'm like, if it works for you, good. Or if that program works for you, good. Because I would rather hear you say I passed my test and was super confident and did what I thought was right for me than to rock and try to do a style that's not yours, not get the results that you want, and then question your abilities of being able to actually accomplish the goal in general. So sit yourself down and say, who am I? What is my end goal? What do I have right now that can help me get there? What do I need to help myself get further in that advancement? And stay inside your situation. Do not let other people's opportunities and other people's highlight reels dictate where you think you need to go. Because we only see the results, not the process that people had to take to get there. Because a lot of times I'm like, man, I really wish I could do what this person did. But I don't know what it took them to get there unless they're directly telling me. But even then, I'm not going to have the same hardships and drawbacks that they had to accomplish their goals. So again, stay in the moment. Stay powerful within your situation and build yourself up rather than tearing yourself down and being like, I'm not where I want to be or I'm not where I should be because other people who are not as skilled or not as gifted in this area are doing better than I am. And it's like, they may be on the front end, but you don't know what they're going through in that moment. So stay in the moment, stay powerful in your experience and do not compare yourself to somebody else because the moment that you start comparing yourself to someone else, you stop being your unique and gifted self and you start losing your identity because if you are consistently doing something over time, the amount of energy and experience and competence that you get in that moment is going to be maintainable rather than, okay, I'm going to have binges and spurts of doing this or, wow, I was super motivated when I first took the exam, but then I failed and now I don't even really want to do it. And it's like, did you actually want to do it in the beginning? And if you lost that spark, build yourself back up, get yourself back into that moment and say, this is anything I'll give up anything to get where I want to go, which is passing the exam or anything in that moment. So if you are finding yourself comparing yourself or you're feeling yourself burnt out or you're beating yourself up because you're not where you want to be, know that you will accomplish your goal as long as you're consistently doing something over time because you're going to get experience that you otherwise did not have prior to the experience or moment or opportunity that you're doing at that time. So don't act like you failing or not being where you want to be right now means that it's never going to happen because that's where a mentality can start to build up. You'll start doing things and give up when things get hard and everything in life is going to be difficult because the most maintainable and successful things that we hold to our hearts are the most difficult things in it. We had to put a lot of work into getting to that point. So because if someone gave you an opportunity that was super easy, you may not respect it, you may not honor it, you may not enjoy that experience as much as if you had to claw and grind and get and go through a lot of dangerous things or difficult things to get there. So do not compare yourself to other people's highlight reels. And if you are going to do that, make sure they're actually aligned with where you actually want to go because they could be a mentor to you and guide you and place you into positions that you otherwise would not have been in if you did not reach out and embrace that situation or opportunity or strategy or technique or a piece of information, etc. So do not compare yourself. Stay in the moment. Get yourself to where you want to go and get the job done and get to where you want to see yourself being rather than wondering what will it take for me to get there because you will thank yourself when you accomplish your goal that you started right now and did not hold off and put it off and try to do other things and do multiple things. Focus as a laser 
rather than a flashlight because the laser is able to cut through things. A flashlight just brightens things up for the moment, but will fizzle out and not be able to be maintainable. And again, I thank you guys so much for the support. If you want to be a part of the study groups on Sunday, send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com. And if you're like, I kind of forgot which the study groups are that are coming up, they are as follows. 531, practice questions. 67, research, program development, and program evaluation. 614, acronym and practice questions. 621, human developmental theories. 628, community interventions. And if you want individual tutoring, send me an email as well at berda24 at gmail.com. Check me out on Facebook to get the most up-to-date information. Check out my podcast. It's at Fill in the Gaps, as well as my Facebook page is Fill in the Gaps. And the podcast is on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify. And it's just me interacting with other people and providing practical advice on how to mobilize and empower yourself to walk into the exam, kick it in the chest, get what you want, and be the best version of you that you can be. And the rest of this video is a previous study group that I did in the past, and I'll be interacting with other people and providing practical advice on how to build themselves up rather than tearing themselves down. And if you're liking this video, give it a thumbs up down below because it really helps out the channel for other people to recognize and notice that I exist. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's the button down below. Click the bell next to it to get email notifications of everything. Comment down below something that you want to see in the future or something that you've learned or just something positive because people do read the comments and they gain a lot from it, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video and peace out, guys. I failed by eight points the first time and I failed by one the last time. I totally gave up after the second exam. I've registered again since then and I've been approved to test again. Really anxious about studying and retesting. So what I would say to this is understand what it felt like to fail by eight and then again by one and what helped you progress and what further things do you need to do to get yourself back in there. And it's difficult to walk into a situation knowing that you had two prior times that you didn't get to the result that you wanted, but then re-changing your mind to say, this third attempt is another lesson that I can learn. And if I keep this persistence and determination and dedication to something over time, even though I'm not getting the intended result, what else will I gain from this situation? And where can I apply this in another area of my life? Because if you stay consistent, dedicated and determined to anything, you will eventually get the result that you're supposed to be able to obtain. But there are things at that time that may have been restricting you or holding you back, or there were lessons in this. So if you're feeling anxious and not wanting to retest, sit yourself down and say, what about this third experience or third time is preventing me from wanting to walk in there and get what I want, which is license. Because there's fear and then there's actual possible detrimental situations. So most times when people are talking about being anxious and worried about going back and retaking the exam, it's fear. Because if you walk into the exam, the chances of that exam exterminating you off this planet or killing you in some way is very, very minimal. Of course, there's like freak accidents and stuff, but telling yourself, what evidence do I actually have that this exam can harm me or hurt me or prevent me from getting what I actually want in my situation? So you have to identify the evidence that you have that you're not capable of passing the exam. You went from eight to one point, you had progress, you had a routine, you were super duper close, which shows that you are capable of walking in, finishing 170 questions and waiting for your results. And if you are feeling worried, unpack what is making you worried and focus on what you need to make yourself feel more sound and more settled in what you want to do. Because at this time, you have what it takes to pass the exam. If you did not, they would not let you schedule your exam. They would say, get the heck out of here. You did not do the requirements. You are one shred and one second away from getting where you want to go. It's just a matter of pulling the trigger and saying, I can do this regardless of what has happened in the past and what I feel that I should not be doing. You are destined to do very, 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 very 
very great things, but if you don't put great effort and go through great trials and tribulations, you will not enjoy this situation when it happens. You will not embrace the situation when it happens and you will ultimately lose it. And a good example that I'll give is let's say somebody gets you a gift for Christmas. You may enjoy it up front. You might be super excited. You may take extra careful care of it. But at the end of the day, you're going to start treating that object as just it's something. But let's say you work and put your hard earned time into something and buy something for yourself. You are never going to lose that focus of taking extra good care of it because you had to sacrifice, you had to endure, and you had to feel a burn of what it felt like to obtain that when it was not obtainable up front. Anything that you have gone through that was difficult, you will remember and be able to recall that immediately. If I asked you about an easy time in your life, you would not place any importance or emphasis and you had to put great deals of effort to even put that out of your memory and drag that into the moment. So anything that you're going through that's difficult right now is necessary to embrace the moments that you are supposed to feel that are comfortable and that'll make you a better person. Because even through any trial or tribulation that you go through, whip out your pad and paper and say, what lesson am I getting out of this? Rather than why me? What am I going through right now? Why is this happening to me? Why not you? Because you are being equipped and given all the necessary resources you need to maintain and empower and become a better person for yourself as well as the people around you. This situation may be about you, but it also involves the people that are watching you go through hell and not giving up. This situation is a difficult situation but it is making you a better person at the end of the day. And if you're not taking the lessons that come with this hard, difficult trial and tribulation, how dare you? Because you are robbing yourself as well as the people around you that could be getting that experience along with you. So when you feel unmotivated and when you feel like you can't keep going, push further even more. Throttle down, double down, lose the house, break the car. I don't know, get what you need to do based on the fact that there's a lesson and there's a reason, not just a season. Because if you do something for a short period of time, that's for a season, and no one remembers the first season of the episode of the show that you're watching right now. Start enduring things and start saying, what am I obtaining from this situation that's going to better equip me and jade me and prepare me and mold me into the person that I'm supposed to be? Because at the end of the day, this exam is deeper than an exam because the amount of effort and focus and importance you're placing on yourself may be the only time in your life that you put it in. We are in a helping profession and we want to help other people, but this exam is a situation where you're helping yourself, which is indirectly helping the people around you watch you go through this. This is all of the things that you have to have go through your mind when you say, I don't feel like doing this, or I don't feel like doing that, or I don't think I can do this. You can certainly do it because if you can think about it, you can definitely do it and you can mold yourself and you can build yourself into whatever you want based on the fact that you've never given up on yourself. But at that moment where you start giving up on yourself, your timer and clock are at zero because you aren't putting forth the amount of energy towards that situation. So at that time, that is the only time and only situation that you failed based on the fact that you gave up and have lost the experience that you were in prior to that. So never stop investing and building and molding yourself into the person, social worker, X amount of role that you want to put in there are supposed to be. So that's what I would say when someone says, I feel unmotivated. I don't think I can do this. I'm worried. I failed before because at the end of the day, I failed a million times, but I am still succeeding in helping other people based on the fact and the things that I've went through because I've never given up. And that's why people want to rock with me because I have passion, I have determination, I've had dedication, and I know what it feels like to fail. And that's why I'm more empathetic towards people when they're like, man, I'm not sure if I can do this or that based on the fact that I was once there in that situation. So that's what I would say to that question. And that's what happens when someone asks a question like that. I get fired up I because I can picture myself in that situation and I want someone to know that they're not alone and that they can keep going and do this. Hi, everyone. I'm hoping to get over my anxiety and lack of motivation about taking this ex test. I should have already taken the test in the eyes of others, but what all I hear is how difficult the test is in Virginia. I really want to pass my clinical exam, but the pressure from family and friends is not helping. Um, so I 
I've been chasing this dream since 2010. Um, I'm kind of sick, so I'm sorry for my voice being hoarse. Um, I've been. Don't, I started studying on my don't own. Don't worry. This is this is a community, and we're supporting you. So, regardless of what the situation is, just spill your heart to us. Thank you. So I started this journey. <laughs> started studying on my own as of last year. Um, I had completed all of my supervision hours actually um, since April of this year. Um, unfortunately, the person who I needed to complete my paperwork kind of took time um, filling it out. And so I had to sit and wait. That's what happens when you do, when you get supervision for free, you're more, it's more about their time than your time. Um, I finally was able to get what I needed as far as my documents signed, and I finally got approved to take the test. Um, but then by when that happened, I kind of got discouraged because I didn't feel the fire anymore. Um, and <clears throat> I also had started a new position at a new employment site where um, I saw a lot of effort unethical things and it kind of put me in a bad place and I became burned out. Um, so I left that job and I had someone actually ask me to join them in their private practice and I currently um, provide therapeutic services and substance abuse services under their license. So I've been pretty lucky with that um, and she's been motivational for me um, my, my problem though right now is trying not to doing things from the book work perspective instead of how I do it with the client. Um, and so that's why I like how you break down the questions um, when I when I sit and I and I hear you and you're highlighting things because I need to recognize that difference for myself. And so I find myself getting tripped up, especially when it comes to the theories, um, the ethics I'm okay with, but the human development part, for some reason, it's like, phew, it just like, it's boomed over me. Um, so I know that those are areas that I need um, to improve in. One of the things that I'm looking into is to, um, pay to um, set a test date for myself. I think I need to do that now, um, so that way then I can get remotivated. Um, so that's number one. That's what I plan to do, especially after listening to everyone else um, talking about you know losing motivation and what they need to do. So I know what I need to do now, which is set that date for the examination um but then the other thing too is um i've been trying to find people who i can study with and i haven't been successful in that only because i feel as if i'm okay doing it by myself but i also like the input and listening to other people um because i feel like i learned that way too because i get to learn how they <clears throat> they thought about how they got to that answer excuse me um, so even if I get the answer wrong, I'm okay with that as long as I can hear, you know, how other people got to that answer because it helps me then recognize, oh, okay, yeah, you know, I see their point of view. Um, so that's where I'm at now. Um, people say that the test in Virginia is extremely difficult. Um, if you fail it twice, then you, by the, the state, then has you go back under supervision for a year. Um, and so that's my fear. My fear is not failing the test the first time, but it's definitely um, about failing it a second time and having to do supervision. Um, and so that's where I am, Phil. So what has you trying to predict the future and saying you're going to fail so you have to take it a second time and then you fail and do supervision already? <laughs> I know. That's where I have to stop. Yeah, I, I know that I need to stop. Um, thinking about what other people are as far as talking about how they failed it. And I just have to remind myself that 
that's their experience and not mine and just be more optimistic and of course continue telling myself I got this and I'm going to do this um but yeah I you know I've that's one of the the things that because I hear it 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 has set some fear in me And the thing with fear is like, if you don't entertain that situation, it doesn't become yours. Even though you hear a fact doesn't mean that you have to have some type of visceral reaction or start to fear that it's going to happen with you. Because at that point, if it's still persistent when the situation isn't even relevant in your situation, that's anxiety. And with anxiety, you just settle it, adjust it and entertain the thought and burn through it because anxiety is not something you can kill. It's not something that you can just shrug off and say, yeah, that's not a big deal. And say, if I don't pass this first time around, then that's when I have to actually start telling myself that I'm not going to be able to do this. And after that first exam attempt, if you don't pass, then you just address and assess and say, what changes do I need to make to go at it again? And then if you fail, for a second time, that's when you have to say, then I have to do supervision. But if you start packing up the car prior to a, a hurricane happening, then it's, it's not going to lead you to being able to live a successful and capable prep because you're going to always think, yep, I'm going to fail this attempt and what I'm doing right now is going to be worth nothing. So you're not going to be wanting to be able to feel motivated to do something if someone told you, what whatever you do for these next four months, they're going to mean nothing to you and you're going to lose it all. No one's going to want to do anything. But if you tell yourself, this is a possibility, but it's not my situation. So if you have people around you telling you like, you might have to take this again, or if you fail, you have to do supervision again, just look at them and say, I, I appreciate you caring about my situation, but it's not yours. And I'm going to focus on what I do. And there are many people in life that care about you, but they might indirectly overstep a boundary, which creates anxiety and reservations. But if you vocalize your needs and tell them, I understand where you're coming from, but that's not my experience yet. So when it comes, can we address it then? Because if you let people influence who you are and tell you what you need to do, you're not your own person. You're that person's whatever they want you to be. Thank you. I needed to hear that. Thank you. Exactly. Like, you're welcome. But if you go back and watch my first video, I am mm -hmm. the same person that I am right now when I say the almost exact same mm -hmm. things like, hey, guys, it's Phil coming at you yeah. with another video. That's not by mistake. Mm -hmm. Right. It's simply. Right. And you do say that. And I'm sorry to cut you off. And, I'm, you know, you do say that you, you do tell everyone you know, not to, to kind of like, don't listen to what other people are saying or other people's experience. Yeah. Because if you start letting people tell you who you should be, you're not going to be the same person or your identity. Because once that person leaves, you're going to continue doing the patterns and wishing that they were still there to tell you your next move. Right. But if you stay true to who you are over time and stay consistent, that is when you start to develop a sense of identity and who you want to be and identify what works for you and what doesn't work for you. But if I shove four different preps down you and say, here's a book for you to read, here's something for you to listen to, and here's a chart that I created, how about you look at it? You're going to say, uh, all right, let me do them all, when you may only be a reader. And you should only be reading if that's your learning style. And you, every single person in here can identify their learning style if they think back how they learned in school mm -hmm. and how they made it through grad school. Like if a right. professor showed you a PowerPoint and you were able to retain that, you're a visual person. If someone mm -hmm. was like, hey, how about you do this or create a project with this or you needed an example that would be in person, you're a tactile person. And if you closed your eyes and someone only told you the instructions or what you needed to do, you're an audio person. And if you're not doing things based on your learning style, you might as well put a blindfold over your eyes and try reading that book because you're not going to retain it. You're not going to learn it. You're not going to retain it. And I have said before, 
you may have to cut people off while you're prepping for this exam. You have to tell people I'm not available until February 14th after my exam, because I enjoy your presence, but it's not a present because you're making me anxious and making me self doubt and almost blow up. So Mm -hmm. you may have to set deadlines and ground people out of your life as well as ground yourself. If you're looking at social media and you're in Facebook groups and stuff, and someone's telling you, man, I failed for this amount of time or I passed and did this. You may need to break your phone in half until you pass the exam. Mm-hmm. Because if someone's calling you on the phone or you're seeing things on your phone that are making you more anxious, get rid of it. Burn the house down. Not literally. Don't take that literally. But know, you may have to burn the house down in order to save yourself from the contamination that's in that house that's trapping you in. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Thank you. You're welcome. And if you need anything in the process, please reach out. I definitely will, Phil. Awesome. Is there a suggested study schedule? Hi, um, my name is Elena. Um, I am currently an MSW student. I should graduate this upcoming May 2020. Super excited about that. Um, In the state of Maryland, you can apply to take the exam as of the beginning of your final semester. So I'll be making an application next week to get approval to take the exam. Um, But I've started the process of going through some of the information. Um, I did what they tell you not to do, of course, and took a practice exam as soon as I got the first one um, because I wanted to see where I was starting from. Um, Same thing I did when I took the LSAT a few years back. Take the practice exam out the gate to see what you don't know, to know where to start. Um, So I read the book through and through, took the practice exam once, um, and I got a 102 out of the 170. And then I took a second one after studying for about three weeks and got a 122 out of 170. So I'm kind of concerned about having a false confidence already because I haven't put that much work in. Um, So kind of just trying to get an idea, is there a standard study schedule and maybe just adhere to that even though I feel kind of good about it already? So did you take the same practice test twice? No, two different ones. Okay. So I would tell you, and this is going to sound weird, but you'll understand, not every question is created equal. Understood. I get that. So if I give you 170 quote unquote easy questions and you blow it out of the water, and then I give you another 170 and it buries you, that buried exam is going to be better off than the one that was super easy for you. Right. And a thing that I'll rechange your mind around is that it's not the score that we need to be looking at. It's how you navigated and process those questions to get that score. So the things I kind of identified that I know I need to work on anyway is to slow down. I'm naturally a pretty good test taker, always have been. Um, but I, and I read naturally really fast. Um, side effect of going to law school, possibly, but I read exceptionally fast. So one thing I found that the que- almost half of the questions that I missed are those ones with the keywords that are read too fast. So um, somebody mentioned earlier in today's session to reread the questions twice to make sure you get the full picture. That's a strategy I've been trying to learn to use. Um, definitely just pretty much just slowing down, taking my time, rereading. Once I think I have the answer, reading it again to make sure I'm, I'm actually choosing the best or which one's not or accept like those keywords. Um, but just in terms of content, I really need more memorization when it comes to like medications. But other than that, um, most, of, most of the questions I've gotten back, I've gone over all of the feedback that they give you, um, you know, with the explanations. I'm understanding it. I'm processing it. So um, kind of just trying to get an idea of what uh, what the standard study schedule looks like for most people and adhere to that to kind of get rid of me doing my own judging because I don't think my judgment's pretty accurate. So I, I would say your judgment is correct because it comes from the person that knows themselves best. Gotcha. Because at the end of the day, I could prescribe you something and it wouldn't be your prep anymore. But If you find yourself going super duper faster in the exam, 
utilize a routine that you can utilize with every question. So if you're going to prescribe yourself reading the question twice, read every single question twice. Don't use yeah. it as a PRN because if you use it as a PRN, you're going to convince yourself that the questions that you have to read twice are more difficult than the ones that you read one time, which is going to raise your anxiety and hyper focus on details that may not actually be relevant in the question. Gotcha. So I would so be as consistent as you possibly can throughout the entire process. Sounds good. Awesome. And if you have any questions throughout the process, but I would also say enjoy your time in the school because you don't ever get that back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, honestly, like for it to be over at this point. <laughs> like, honestly, I, and I do, I do lectures at U of M and that's where I went to school. Every single time I walk into that school, I think, dang, I wish I was still a student here. Oh, no, I'm an online student. I don't have like a campus or a campus community. So it's just going through the process, going to field, powering through field. Ugh, sounds rough. All right, never mind. I rebuke my <laughs> statement and just continue doing what you're doing. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> oh, Moses. All right, take care. <laughs> Man, that's funny. All right, float on the track like a segue. All right. Hey, Phil, this is. Jatavia. Again, I took my exam twice and got the same results, 85 and 98. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, but I would like your advice. How's it going? Hi, Phil. What's up? <laughs> so what do you think that you're doing wrong? I don't know. Actually, the second time I took it, I felt that I was more in tune with the exam. Like I read each, qu each question like three times and uh, the answer choices three times. And I thought that I was, I thought that I was doing good actually. And I was more surprised because I got the same result. I got an 85 out of 98. But I think my problem is that I know the material, I'm good with recall, but when I get the question, I don't know how that, how to answer the question or exactly what they're asking me, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes entire sense. So I'm good with like the knowledge base, but it's just the application that I struggle with. And I don't know if I need to attend group sessions because I've been studying by myself or from time to time, my mama helped me study or my fiance can help me study. But I don't know, like I want to give up and not take the exam again because fear and I'm scared that I'm gonna fail again. But then again, I don't want to give up because I'm actually enjoying the learning process, but I'm not enjoying the failing process. Okay, well, the question I asked you is kind of a trick question because there's nothing that you're doing wrong. Everything that you've done up to this point is correct because it's what you thought was best to do in that moment. Mm -hmm. And with that, you said that you know the content and it's just a matter of navigating questions. So when you navigate the questions, rather than just getting the correct answer or incorrect answer, if you will, understand why each answer is incorrect and why the one that is correct is correct and how the other answers could possibly be correct if one small detail is changed because on the exam, one small detail creates the biggest wave and changes the direction of what you should be doing. Okay. So I would say keep doing the exact same thing, but making the change that you just said is not focus entirely on content, but how to utilize and apply and make that content come to life. Okay. Because the same thing can be said with clients. I could go to the best college on the, on the planet and have all of the knowledge in my backpack, but until I apply it and have experience of applying it, I'm not going to be worth a nil of nothing. Right. Which at this moment, you said that you have the knowledge of 
of the, the content. We just have to have you apply to different situations and understand when it is appropriate to do certain actions and which actions come prior to the actions that are available. Right, because um, both exams, it was not recall. Like I, I rarely had, I think I only had one question on the DSM, but it was more so what would you do first, next, or best? And I broke it down using an acronym. And it's still, I don't know, I still scored the same thing. So I would let go of the score because both exams weren't the same questions that you had before. It's just that the difficulty of the questions accumulated to 98. Mm -hmm. Because it may feel like you took the same exam with the same questions because you had the same needed score. But at the end of the day, they were different. And the different changes and twists and spins that were on the exam were not the same ones that you had been, quote unquote, encountered before. Right. So I'd almost change your view of, am I doing something wrong? It's like, what am I doing correct that can lead me to where I want to be? And I've done nothing wrong. All of my previous attempts are leading me to this attempt so that I'm sharper and brighter than I would have been otherwise if I hadn't taken them before. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. And if you have any other questions or need anything, just let me know, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. I failed the exam in November 2019 by 15 points. From then until now, I've been studying differently. I've identified that I often change my answers, what ends up being wrong. Do you have any helpful tools to stop doing that and how I can study medications and diagnosis? Hi, Phil. Can you hear me? Yeah. How's it going? How's it going? I got okay. <laughs> then I'm going, I'm this well. I, um, so yeah, so that's my question. I failed, I think, because um, it took me so long to compose my anxiety. Um, the room was new, the space was new, I was anticipating something different. And by the time that I collected myself, I think it was just already too late. Um, and so from then till now, I've been like just changing my study um, habits and just the way that I study. And what I found is that every time I change my answers, I change it to the wrong answer. Like I'll, I'll um, rule out and it, I end up being with two choices and then I choose in my head which one and then I don't know I change it somehow and then it ends up being wrong what is your process of breaking down a question well I just started using the acronym that um that you went over in one of your videos and so I'm learning how to do it like that but my immediate process is to rule out that's the first thing that I do and then I usually get down to the two that I think are right that are usually right and then when I pick one it's wrong what causes you to change your answer I have no idea maybe I don't I don't maybe I don't know maybe I'm not um fully confident in the fact that I know the material maybe, but I don't know how to stop that from happening or. How often do you reflect on everything that you've done up to the point of you studying? A lot. Do you feel like you overthink the material? I think so. I think I look at the question and I know you often say don't add anything. And so I try my best to not do that. Um, and I've gotten better but I think I still do that. Like I overanalyze it. And when I get to an answer that is like quick, like I say to myself, oh yeah, that's definitely the answer. I stop and I say, well, how, it, it can't be that easy. Maybe I should rethink this. And then I'll look at the second of the two and say, oh, maybe it's this one. And then when I check it, it's wrong. And I'm like, freak, I should have just went with my first instinct. So my biggest recommendation at this point would be do not answer the questions too fast for you. Meaning at this moment, you are telling yourself, I'm answering the question too fast, which 
causes you to freak out and then say, I can't possibly be this competent and this skilled at doing right. this that I've been doing for X amount of time that I have X amount of practice reps in. So that's what I mean is how often do you reflect on what you've been doing? Because if you're reflecting on everything that you've done up to that point, there should be zero question if you know mm. what you're doing or not. Gotcha. So I was just talking to my family today and they're like, oh, is this your like YouTube setup? And is this, this? And I was like, yeah, this is like the camera and this is the mic. And then the, you do this and do this. And they're lost at this point because they don't have the same lingo and jargon as I have developed from doing it over and over and over and over. So I had to almost set myself back to the point of, Phil, what did you know when you first started doing these videos and recordings and all of these things? And that's where they're at. Mm. So you almost have to tell yourself, you are no longer where you once were of self-doubting and not knowing. You've got past that point. So you have to almost graduate yourself to that point. Gotcha. So maybe that comes from you changing your routine or maybe that comes from you changing the way that you talk to yourself prior to even touching the question and saying, I put in X amount of work, I am capable, I'm competent, and I can get the right answer. Yeah. 170 times. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I have to start doing. Maybe, maybe, maybe putting that on the, like the whiteboard when I go to take the exam as just a reminder, maybe that'll help just to kind of refocus my brain when it starts to go off in a place where I'm doubting myself. Cause I take, I'm start. I, I have to take it again in May. Is that when you're scheduled to take it or is that your deadline? Yes. No, that's when I'm scheduled to take it. Do you feel like that's too long or is that enough time? So I had it scheduled for March <laughs> and then I started doubting myself. So I was like, I'm never going to be ready by March. Cause you know, all the recommendations say you have to study four to six months before and that's too early and I haven't been doing it well. So let me just push it out. And I, I went, I pushed it out to uh, May, but I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to push it out no more. <laughs> I'm going to stop right there. I'm taking it in May. Can I ask you one question? Hmm. Who's taking the exam? I am. Then why are you referring to they when you describe your process? I don't know. I said they? Yeah, you said, <laughs> well, this is their recommendation, and this is their oh, recommendation, oh, oh, and they oh, recommended about, that. Yes, they did yes, this, yes, and yes. they did that. They are yes. not taking the exam. You are taking the exam, so you have to recognize what you feel is best for you mm -hmm. is what you need to do. Got gotcha. you. And if you keep hearing what they say and what they recommend and what they did and what helps them and what exercise they're doing and all this stuff, you are never going to have a sense of purpose or a sense of self that you're proud of and can hang your hat on. Gotcha. Because if every single thing that you do in life, you think of everything that they have told you to do, you never get the experience of doing it. So when you go to do that activity, that person owns your experience. Gotcha. You are way too powerful and way too talented and way too skilled to have someone that is they telling you what is best for you and what you need to be the most effective version of yourself. Gotcha. So that's where it starts is what works best for me, what has been helpful for people around me that know me is something I'll consider, but I'm not going to blow up my entire house and have someone else rebuild it because that's not what I want my house to look like. Yeah. Okay. So I think you have to sit down with yourself tonight and say, is May too far away? Because I told mm. myself March and now I'm giving myself three extra months to overthink and second guess who mm -hmm. I am. Okay. Ooh, good homework. <laughs> and that's the thing is, it's yeah. way too easy. It's way too easy to change who you are based on the feedback from other people outside of you. Yep, it is. Like, it's so easy for doubt to get in there. And then when I'm actually doing the work, I'm like saying that I know what I'm talking about. And so it blows my mind how I, I'm, you know, not changing fast enough. So maybe that's why I pushed it out to me. 
I don't know. I do have to sit with myself. Good homework. I'll do that. Good. And that's the thing is it's, and I was doing a tutoring session with somebody last night and they had been rocking with me for a long time. They knew the process that I teach better than I almost did. And of course that's being facetious, but <laughs> they picked up another program that someone suggested to them and they quote unquote, weren't doing well. They had a session with me, got every single question right. And I was like, what's the problem here? Like, there's no problem in your process. It's that you let someone leech inside your mind and convince you mm -hmm. that you're not confident and that you're not good enough at what you're doing. So you have to change who you are. I'm so glad you used that example because I was just about to go and spend a lot of money on a brand new set of materials because I'm like doubting myself. So, yes, I will be sitting with myself <laughs> and talking to myself and kind of really figuring this out. Good. And you're not alone because I guarantee there's at least five or more people in this session right now that are saying, I'm afraid. I'm not sure I can do this. And I have way too many materials to even count. Seriously. And that's where you have to sit with yourself and say, do I actually need something else? And if the answer is no, don't do it. Do not do it. Because in your heart, you're telling yourself to the contrary of what you have been saying. And if you need anything along the way, please, please, please reach out. I will. Thank you.